Thanks for tuning in to This Automation Life, brought to you by Brenner Fiedler. I'm your host, Jeremy Schubert. Each week, we discuss technologies used in automation. This week, Rob Robinson, specialist with ABB, is here to discuss soft starters. Thanks for joining us, Rob. Good being here. So, uh, I guess starting off, what's a soft starter? What would somebody use that for? Basically, you're using a soft start to start an asynchronous motor. There's three ways to start and stop a motor. Across the line, a soft start, and a variable frequency drive. All have their strong strengths and weaknesses. Um, with a soft start, basically, you can take a motor, ramp it from zero up to a certain full speed over a certain amount of time. And there's a both electrical and a mechanical benefits to this. Okay. So, it, comparing that to across the line or a drive... Um, across the line is, is more of just like closing contacts, like flipping on a switch, basically. Is that right? Exactly. If you look at across the line starter, it's just like hitting a light switch. It just, the lights come on automatically and very quickly. Okay. Where with a soft start, it's more like using a dimmer. You can bring up the lights up at a certain amount of time, and there's a lot of mechanical and electrical benefits. Okay. So let's dig into those then. It sounds interesting. What, what kind of electrical benefits, and then after, what kind of mechanical benefits do you get from using a soft starter? Sure. On the electrical benefits, when you cro uh, start a motor across the line, the inrush current is huge, and that can be a lot of problems on electrical, um, so in electrical facilities. High current draw, maybe uh, if you see the lights dim, exactly things like that. Okay. And utilities really don't like having high inrush currents, so you have a large industrial facility with a lot of the high horsepower motors. If you're starting and stopping those co constantly across the line, it causes a lot of issues, dips okay. and, and things like that. Where with a soft start, you can actually do current limiting mechanic on the electrical side to uh, allow the inrush to go to a certain point that it's actually capped off. Okay, I got you. So you're not going to push feet, like noise back onto the power lines. Your current draw is going to be a little more evened out. So your voltage is going to be a little more consistent. Yeah, in a lot of electrical facilities, a lot of large facilities, they're charged on their peak surge. So if they have uh, a lot of inrush, their power bill can be very, very high. Does that peak surge determine their rate for like the whole month, or is it? Um, I, don't, I don't know if. It's yeah, a lot of in, depending on what utility you're talking to, but a lot of it they'll look at the high peak surges, and that is their their high end. Wow, and they get charged put on in that. a bracket or something. Wow, so that could end up. Costing them more than just the added energy. It could cost them, they pay more for their energy the whole month. Then. Exactly. That's, okay, that's big potential impact there. So then mechanically, you mentioned there's some advantages. What, what do you get out of uh, soft starting a motor? Sure. Um, on mechanical benefits, when you start a motor across the line, it's immediately up to full speed or very, very quickly. Yeah. And what that causes a lot of wearing on belts and chains and things like that. So it minimizes stress on transmission lines, gearboxes, belts, bearings. Um, it also re reduces or eliminates water hammering torque with torque control. Okay. So there's uh, both mechanical, both uh, saving equipment and also in pumping applications. Okay. You know, I've heard of that. I've actually had someone ask me before about a motor that they had connected to a gearbox on a conveyor. and It was actually causing the gearbox case to uh, bend and start leaking oil. Sure. So they would break a seal from, from basically the motor starting up. So a soft starter is your way to prevent that. Exactly. Okay. It'll bring the motor up. Uh, you know, you can go up in our high-end units. You can take the line out past 100 seconds of ramp up. Wow. So you can bring it up very, very slowly if need be. That's some... Wow. And you mentioned torque control as well. So besides the speed, you could also control how much torque that you're starting out at. Right? Yeah, torque control is really used... Um, you can use it on ramp up and ramp down where it's really really used well on a soft start is during ramp down applications we can give a very linear torque line so okay. it actually varies voltage and current to keep the torque very constant all the way down to stop oh that's nice so that you can kind of maybe control inertia of loads or uh, at least stop things a little more accurately than letting it just go or, or you keep doing work until you're stopped exactly yeah okay that makes sense cool um, now, let's compare a soft starter to a drive. Um, most of the time I see somebody either using a, a switch or they go straight up to a drive. What's going to be the difference? Is there a trade-off? Yeah, with a with soft start, you have the capability to ramp up the motor over a certain amount of time um, and ramp it down over a certain amount of time. But after you get over to, uh, to TOR, or top of ramp, then you're at full speed of the motor. Okay. With a variable freak drive, variable frequency drive, using IGBT technology, you can actually vary the speed of the motor at high end. So if you're trying to keep, keep like constant pressure in a room, it yeah. can chase a 4 to 20 signal around and keep the motor, you know, higher speed if it needs more pressure, lower speed if it needs okay. less pressure. 
Okay, so really, uh, the drive is going to be a benefit if you constantly need to change speeds, but the soft starter is, I just want to ramp up. I want to take things a little soft. Yeah, you want to take uh, the mechanical and electrical issues out of the equation that you get on across the line. Okay, so I, I imagine that it's, uh, it's all about applying the right technology. If, if you don't need to constantly uh, adjust the speed, go with a soft starter. You're probably going to save some money and some complexity in your system uh, with the drive. If you need it, you need it, right? Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Is there any, um, any special things about a soft starter somebody would need to know? Like, are there special features? Or is it? Yeah, there's five uh, basic questions you really have to ask with a soft start before to size it. And the first one is starts and stops per hour. Um, okay. Over 7 to 10, you have to derate. The second one is elevation. Over uh, about 7,000 feet, you have to start derating. Actually, with some of our units, it's five. Um, third one is uh, whether they need a bypass or not. Okay. A bypass contactor. Uh, the fourth one is what their load is. Okay. And I'm not remembering what the fifth one is right now. <laughs> the what well, we did um, starts and stops starts per hour. And stop. Elevation. Elevation. Load. Load. Oh, temperature. Temperature. There we go. Yeah, be a temperature with the soft starts. So I imagine if it's hot, you're going to need a derate as well. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Great. That makes sense. Um, I guess anything else that you want to kind of bring up about soft starts in general? Yeah, the uh, ABB has a full offering from fractional horsepower to 1,000 volts, 1850 inside the Delta. We can also um, install any of these uh, in enclosures up to NEMA you know, 4X, NEMA 12, 3R, NEMA 1, and it's all done in New Berlin, Wisconsin, um, and full accessories are as available as well. Cool. All right, uh, Rob, thanks for being our guest this week. And I also want to thank you uh, for doing uh, our first Tech Talk. So um, for our listeners, Rob actually came on site and did an uh, instructional class uh, going in more in-depth than Soft Starters than what we have time for on the podcast. So thanks, Rob. Thanks for and, uh, me here. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for listening in. If you have any questions um, about what you heard, if you'd like to have a topic you want to, or if you have a topic you want to hear discussed, please email us at tech, that's T-E-C-H, at brfa.com and continue tuning in. Thanks.